Hello and welcome to the listeners questions episode of the Style Stories podcast. So when I was working on this new series of the podcast, I thought I needed to reach out and ask people who were listening what their real lifestyle dilemmas were, because the chances are that they'll be the same as your style dilemmas, because even, you know, we're all from different walks of life, different parts of the world, live in different, maybe some live in the country, some people live in towns. But when it boils down to it, we're all humans and we all have very similar problems when it comes to our style and worrying about what to wear, what to wear for occasions, not understanding our personal style, struggling to shop, getting stuck in style ruts, holding on to clutter. All of these issues are really, really common. So I thought I'd ask the people who are in my free Facebook group, which is called Style Power with Lisa Gilby. And I asked the question, what are your style dilemmas? And today is part one of the listeners' questions. I'm going to tackle their questions to me and come up with some solutions for them. And I hope that it really helps you as well listening at home because maybe you feel the same about your wardrobe as well. So I'm going to kick off with a question from Amanda Dance. So Amanda has been in my Facebook group for a while and she, she says... I want to know how to shake my style up. How do I shake my style up? So what I'm reading between the lines from that question is she feels stuck. She feels stuck in a style rut. How do I shake it up means you want to change something about your style. And what's happened is you've probably got stuck in a you know comfort zone of wearing the same things over and over again and don't have good ideas about what to do next with your style. She also says as well, she wants help with putting outfits together. So, you know, I'm thinking you're looking at your wardrobe, you're feeling a bit bored with it, you're wearing the same thing again and again, and you don't really feel pulled together enough at the moment. So my advice, Amanda, would be, and I know because you're in my Facebook group, you've done the wardrobe declutter, and you've gone through the style steps. So you've tried to work out your three words, all of those things. Anyone listening at home, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to the beginning of this series where I take you through the steps to get a winning wardrobe formula, because it really helps to take stock of what you actually want from your style instead of sort of hurtling through life and buying things randomly. Just take a step back. Who are you today? How do you want to look? How do you want to dress? So that's the first thing to do. And decluttering the wardrobe is super important. So there are some things in your wardrobe, Amanda, that you'll be going to that make you feel good. Now, the things you're wearing in this style rut, are they practical items? Are you just wearing them because it's comfortable and easy? Or are you wearing them because you love them? Because that's two very different things. Because there's nothing wrong with having a signature style. So lots of the world's most stylish, stylish people have a bit of a uniform. They have worked out. They know what suits their body shape. They know what suits their vibe and their style. And they stick to that. And there is nothing wrong with that kind of rut. And you can just update it and have variations on that. But if you're reaching for things that are just comfortable and maybe worn out and things like that, then definitely that needs to be shaken up. Now, something that I really notice as well that people struggle with and I'm not saying this is definitely you, Amanda, but um, is a money mindset thing. So people wear the clothes in their wardrobe again and again and again, when perhaps they could have been taken out of the wardrobe because they're not making them feel good anymore. Perhaps they're dated items. You know, the reason people do that is because they haven't got a big budget to spend on clothes, especially at the moment with, you know, the crisis that's going on in the world and the cost of living crisis and people believe it's frivolous to spend money on clothes but it actually affects how you behave in life and how you feel so much it isn't frivolous if you do it in a sensible focused way so that means again you you know you're sounding like you're still confused about your style and if you're at home listening feel that as well go through the steps again. It really helps to keep doing it. But I would also find just one or maybe two style people that you like on Instagram. So people who could be your style icon 
that you can follow and take inspiration from in a really clear way. So there'll be, you know, there's one person at the moment that I love, Caroline Style Hacks. I think she's amazing. She wears things that I really would wear myself. I've, I'm only really following her at the moment. So, you know, it's quite good to have one person to take inspiration from. And that can really help shake up your style. Now, the money mindset thing is, is an issue because the price of clothes and everything have gone up. And a lot of people still feel, you know, say 50 pounds they would spend on a top five years ago. And they still think 50 pounds gets you a good top when it, you know, it doesn't, you know, we now spend, have to spend a bit more money because prices of everything have gone up. Look at your clothes. Are they all below a certain price point? Are they all quite cheap and haven't held their shape? Things like that, things in the high street that don't have that quality, tend, they don't last, they don't look good after a while, and they don't make you feel good as well. Perhaps what you need is to introduce a few more quality pieces. So a really lovely jacket, a really great pair of jeans. What about your shoes? Shoes often let outfits down. You know, people can have nice clothes and then they ignore the shoes and they don't have the right shoes and then you don't feel like you've got a good outfit. Have you got a good pair of ankle boots? Have you got a good pair of trainers? Your trainers need updating. These are core wardrobe pieces that can make a big impact on your style. So just try to really think again what your three words are. Find a style icon to follow. Is it maybe that you're not spending enough or you're buying too many cheap clothes? So could, could that be the issue? You know, I don't know enough detail here, but I'm just these are just some some things that come up that are really, really common. You know, people just buying lots of clothes, but buying them from two at Sainsbury's or, you know, other other sort of cheaper places to get that thrill and to try and make their style. But actually those things can be the, the patterns can really date. They're often trend led. Do you need a few more really quality, good pieces in your wardrobe? And what I would definitely say as well is jackets. Jackets, 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 saying it four times. But, you know, jackets make outfits. It's the third piece. So you can have a pair of jeans, a simple top, pair of trainers. Add a really cool jacket, a really cool blazer or a poncho or a really good coat. Then you look pulled together and you look like you've got an outfit. So have you got the pieces to make these outfits? That is the question I'm asking you as well. So I hope that helps. So that was question number one. Question number two, and I'm doing it in order of uh, how I was asked in the Facebook group, is Alison Longworth. So Alison has done a couple of my courses in the past and she's been in my Facebook group for a while. And Alison's asked, how can you stay current when the seasonal shapes, colours and trends don't work for you? And also, how can I keep my edge? So two questions there. So first of all, how can you stay current when what's on trend, what's in fashion doesn't actually suit you? So when I read that question, the first thing that popped into my mind was, I wonder if she's referring to all the oversized silhouettes that are around at the moment. So everyone's wearing, you know, blazers that are four sizes too big for them, big, really baggy, wide trousers, that kind of thing. If that doesn't suit you, unless you're a real fashionista, there's no reason to wear it. And fashionistas are, you know, the people working at the forefront of fashion, but also I think a lot of trends like that and styles are for young people and also for people who haven't quite found their style. And the reason I say that is because they're people who don't wanna get it wrong. So what they do is they wear what's in fashion because they haven't got the self-knowledge to wear what they know really suits them and that makes them feel good because they want to fit in. Because at the end of the day, we all want to fit in. But Alison also, she wants to look good. She wants to look on trend. She also, also wants to keep her edge. So I'm going to try and give you some actual practical tips to enable you to do that. So the first thing is, find out what cuts suit your body shape. So if you, you know, those, and I'm just assuming you're referring to the oversized silhouettes or, you know, what's the colours around at the moment. Brown is a huge colour for autumn 23, 24. I know Alison is definitely not a brown person. She doesn't suit brown. 
there are shops that will cater for you and there are cool shops that will cater for you and it's how you put things together as well what cut of trouser really suits you what cut of jean really suits you stick to those you will be able to find a version of those in the shops I would say the devil's in the detail as well. So if you want to add edge, then I would, you know, consider adding a metallic boot, for example. There are a few silver metallic boots around at the moment. Zara have got a knee length pair. There are ankle ankle boot ankle pairs around, get my words out. You know, a lot of really classic dressers wouldn't wear a silver boot because it doesn't suit their style personality. So I keep going back to the question to get the clarity on what suits your body shape, but also your three words. What are your three words? How do you want to look? Edgy is clearly one of your three words. You could use some statement jewellery from Chambers and Bow to add some edge and to add a bit of personality to your outfits. You could wear a great pair of jeans and you could add a tunic, like a long loose tunic over the top. There are loads of tunics around in the shops. They more or less suit everyone if you find the right one. There are lots of, sort of patterned quilted jackets around in the shops that are quite interesting at the moment as well. Stick to colours that suit your skin tone. You know, you definitely don't need to wear colours of the season. And I know you understand that. Alison, I'm speaking to Alison on the podcast, but anyone listening at home as well, it does pay to work out what colours really suit your skin tone and just stick to those. You know, there will be shops that cater for your style type as well. You know, off the top of my head, Free People, for example, F-R-E-E, -E, Free People, you know, they cater to people who like a boho vibe. They're quite young. They cater to young people. But if, if you've got a bit of a boho vibe and you'd like a, a kimono, something like that, then you would go to Free People to get it. Anthropology is quite similar, very floral, very feminine. They've got a bit of edge to their stuff as well. To the brands that they carry in anthropology have got a bit of edge to them. So I'd recommend trying there as well. You know, floral dresses are not everyone's cup of tea. That's been a huge trend for a long, long time now. So if that's not your idea of a good outfit, then just stick to block colours or stick to plain. I personally don't like floral. Occasionally, I feel like wearing a floral dress, but it's not really my MO. It's not really what I want to wear all the time, even if it's on trend. But I'm a bit contrary anyway, so if something is on trend, then I probably wouldn't wear it unless I really love it because I don't want to be trend-led. And I know that, you know, a lot of people out there, if, the way to sort of stay current and to stay looking stylish is to wear classic clothes because classic clothes don't date. As long as you pay attention to the cuts of the trousers, for example, the cuts of the jeans. So, you know, at the moment, skinny jeans are out. I would say don't wear skinny jeans at the moment if you want to look stylish. Find a pair of jeans that suits your body shape that aren't skinny to keep your look updated. But, you know, if you're not a classic dresser like me, like Alison, if you're listening at home, and you're not a classic dresser. You know, how do you stay looking, looking current? It is by paying attention to detail, knowing what shapes suit your body shape and sticking to those, knowing what colours suit your skin tone, getting absolute clarity on your three words. And when you put an outfit together, asking yourself, does this outfit fit my three words? Find a style icon that really suits you and suits your style and take lots of inspiration from them. And add little details like a silver boot or something like that, the edgy jewellery. Those kinds of things can really make a difference. A really cool coat can make a huge difference. We're coming into coat season. A great pair of boots, just things like that, the core pieces. But, you know, most stylish people, like I've said already on the podcast, they have a uniform. They know what suits them and they, and they stick to it and they keep it simple. And I think that would be my advice, really, is, is, to, keep it, is to keep it simple and just to get that clarity again on what suits you and find some brands that are going to cater to you. OK, so I hope that was helpful. And then I've got Lou Coy, who asks any shopping tips for pre-teens and helping them to find their style. OK, I can only talk. I don't really work with pre-teens. I work with professionals. I have styled some 18 year olds and things in the past. So I can only speak from experience of having two sons myself. Now, they are 14 and 16. 
So in my experience, I don't think you can really influence them because I think, and I think particularly if you've got girls, because they need to forge their own path. Um, and also I think as well, the huge thing about preteens and teens is that they are in tribes. So my eldest son, he's into music, he's in two bands, and him and all his friends wear baggy jeans and big baggy t-shirts with cool things on them or band slogans, that kind of thing. My youngest son wouldn't wear that in a million years. He is into sport, he's into football. All he wears is Nike tech fleeces and Nike track suits. And all his friends only wear that as well. And you know, he thinks my other son is a geek and my other son thinks that he's just a basic boy you know it's it's a tribe tribal thing and I think that, but I would recommend some brands to you though so I would recommend for boys particularly H&M also for girls as well but they're really good for pre-teens and teens and also if they're super trendy and they want to be really trendy then Urban Outfitters has got to be the best I mean it is quite expensive but they do great baggy jeans great big t-shirts. Zara, I think, is quite good, although it can be, it has some sort of funny slogans on things, so I don't always find great things in there. But I, you know, I think it's just, you just have to let them find their way. Unless they're, they're looking really scruffy, I don't think much guidance can be given, because sometimes, I think, as we all know, if it can make them go the other way. You know, you might end up with a goth, you might end up with, I don't know, a pop person, who knows, I don't know anymore, I'm out of touch, I'm too old for that, but hopefully that was a bit helpful with some brands. Then I've got Christine Snowden, who is in Australia, and she asks, I would like some tips for dressing in a smart, casual way once I'm over 45. For the over 45s, how do you dress in a smart, casual way? So I'm going to go back to the formula idea. So it's really, really helpful, dressing smart casual, to have an outfit formula. So I always have two, normally two parts casual, one part smart. So I'll wear a pair of cargo trousers with a t-shirt. That's pretty basic and scruffy because I've got a pair of trainers on usually or a pair of flats. How can I elevate that to make it smart? How can I make that outfit smart? I need a blazer. I need some tailoring for that outfit. So I think tailoring is essential. I think every single wardrobe, every good wardrobe needs a sprinkling of tailoring to make it smart casual. And that is the epitome of smart casual, mixing something casual with something tailored and a lot smarter. So if I've got a silk slip skirt, for example, then that's quite smart, a silk slip skirt. So if I wanted to be really smart, I could throw a blazer on with that or I could bring it down a notch, a bit more casual. I could wear a T-shirt with it and a bomber jacket or a denim jacket. So they're more casual pieces that I'm adding to the silk slip skirt, which is quite smart. That I would maybe wear with a pair of boots. So where's my casual? It's in the jacket. So it's, that's thinking of the words and thinking of the pieces that you're wearing. Are they matching the words? in my outfit is it smart casual or is it just casual am i looking too practical have you got good jackets in your wardrobe christine jackets make the biggest impact ever i talk about it a lot but there's in mango at the moment there's a really great boucle cropped jacket that is just going to elevate any outfit it would look great with cargos it would look great with jeans it would look great with skirts if you're wearing a dress what can you do to smarten it up if it's a casual dress? You could add a tailored blazer again, or you could add this little jacket to it, you know, or is the dress really smart and silk? Where's your casual in that case? Because then your dress is smart. Your casual could be the denim jacket. You add the denim jacket to it. It's just, again, it's about having, you know, thinking of the formula. You can add a belt to your dress. That, that completely elevates things. If you've got a dress, Belt it with a really nice belt. It looks considered. It looks like you've taken the time to think about the outfit. Shoes are a huge one. I've already mentioned it on the podcast. You know, I've, I edited a wardrobe a couple of weeks ago where the, the lady hadn't refreshed her shoes for years. All the shoes were worn out and scruffy. It was dragging down all of her outfits. I really think a pair of ankle boots is essential. I really think a pair of knee-high smart black boots or brown boots, depending on 
your colouring and what you like, it's really essential as well to bring outfits together. Don't wear gym trainers. That would be another piece of advice. You know, some people, especially guys, think wearing sort of gym style trainers with an outfit is right, but it isn't. Gym style trainers are for the gym, for running, for exercising. It can drag down your whole look. Choose some smart leather trousers in a neutral colour. Trousers? Smart, smart trainers in a neutral colour. And that's going to, again, elevate your outfits. If you're wearing a really fancy dress, you can dress it down by matching it with the casual piece, which is trainers. If that's too edgy for you, then add an ankle boot to that dress or knee high boots underneath. These are all things that help with a smart casual wardrobe. You know, I wouldn't, if I looked in a wardrobe and it just had maybe like a practical raincoat and some jeans and just some gym style trainers and some t-shirts, that is not a smart casual wardrobe. That wardrobe needs some tailoring. It needs some good jackets, even a decent tote bag, you know, in a splash of colour like a red is going to elevate your outfits. Statement earrings are going to elevate your outfits as well. If you could just maybe add a few earrings, Anthropology, they do great earrings. Um, I'm trying to think where else. I mean, all the high street places do. H&M do. You know, you could just when you've added a statement earring to an outfit, you just look more pulled together. Lipstick is another thing as well. Lipstick really does give you that polished vibe and can take things from too casual to being a bit more elevated and a bit more smart casual. I would always err on the side of smart as well, particularly at work. I think people have sort of let themselves go a bit after COVID and got too casual. And that's why tailoring is essential in any wardrobe. Also coats as well, I would say, you know, wear a trench coat instead of a practical raincoat. So a smart, classic trench coat in a navy or in a neutral colour is just going to look a lot better than wearing your old North Face coat that you've had for years or the coat that you wear to the park or to walk the dogs in. Make sure you haven't got a, a scruffy rucksack hanging off, off you as well if you're going into work. You know, instead have the smart leather tote bag. It's a really good investment. Spending a bit of money on a couple of quality things is going to pay dividends rather than having a wardrobe full of just practical or cheaper clothes. So that really would be my tip on how to dress in smart casual. Just pay attention to the pieces you've got in the wardrobe. Ask yourself, which is my smart piece? Which is my casual piece? Make sure you err on the side of smart and make sure you have some really good tailoring in the wardrobe as well. So I hope that was helpful. That was listeners questions episode one. I'm going to do the second part of this because there are so many questions and maybe even a third part. I don't know. I haven't been through all the questions yet, but hopefully that was useful. I do love listening, hearing from my listeners. So if you have any particular style questions, do drop me an email, lisa at lisagilbystyle.com. Thanks very much. And I will see you next week.